I really like to give um, quizzes as a way to get students to interact with the material. I think that's the most important thing is to have uh, students busy, active, and you know, frequently doing different things with the course content so that they can process it, think about it, talk about it. And eventually they kind of make the uh, material their own by working with it and trying to understand it. So one thing that I like to do is when I give a quiz, uh, I give lots of quizzes. For example, in one class, my Ling 10 class, uh, students have two quizzes a week. They also have a forum. They also have to respond to other people's uh, postings. So, you know, you could say minimum, each person's involved four times a week in that class and they know they have things to prepare and to uh, get ready for, like the quizzes. In the quizzes, I try to keep them simple. I try to keep them in the same kind of format, usually. And feedback is uh, part of the educational process. You can't, uh, you can't learn anything in life, basically, without doing something and then receiving some kind of feedback on your behavior to be able to know if you should continue doing it this way or not. I mean, it's uh, a basic way of life, of learning, and you can't get out of that system. So I try to model that in my classes. So to make a long story short, what do I do? So for example, here's a uh, quiz, and this is a quiz on um, chapter one in our textbook. And students, it's a true-false quiz. Students go through, they answer all the questions. You can see either true or false. It looks pretty simple. Uh, most students do tell me that true-false questions usually are really hard for them because they have to make a decision. It's not choosing an answer. It's making a decision whether the idea expressed in the statement is true or not. And that's not that easily done. So anyway, a student takes a quiz. And they finish 20 questions. Go to the next page. I see the answers have been saved. That's perfect. They can return to the attempt or they can submit it. Now, students, I always give people a really long time to answer 20 true-false questions on a chapter somebody knows shouldn't take all that long. I give students an hour to do this. I do that on purpose because what I want them to do is to read the book again, to look through the chapter, to think about it, to consider it, and not do it quickly. I don't want them to be under a time pressure. I want them to be under the pressure of choosing the correct answer, and time shouldn't be a factor in that. So here we go. They finish the quiz. They've thought about it. They submit all and finish. And now, come back the results. Each question, this is the feedback. Oh, look, I got it correct, it's true, false. Oop. Now, here's one that's wrong. And what I like to do is not tell students the answer. It's pretty obvious if it's uh, true or if they answer true, then it's false. So the statement's not true. What I like to do is to give them, for example, the correct answer is false, but the answer is on page three. And what I want them to do is to go back and check, find that place in page three that talks about usage and idioms, and to really try to understand why that answer is false when they answered true. I like this also because it gives students an easy, uh, quick way to find the answer. They don't have to struggle and give up after looking for two or three incorrect answers through a whole chapter. They're directed exactly to where the answer is. They can get the feedback they need, more information on why that was correct or not correct. But also what I like is that very often students then will start to uh, email me and start, I mean, in a nice way, but start to argue with me and say, oh, you know, this question's a little misleading, or Pinker actually says blah, blah, blah. And it brings, a, and it opens up the opportunity for dialogue, and students really uh, work hard because maybe they're motivated by the points, maybe they're motivated by 
you know, the need to feel correct in their response, even though it was judged wrong. But whatever, getting the page number, finding that place in the book easily and quickly, it kind of breaks down any uh, restrictions on them pursuing this knowledge. It's all becomes available to them very quickly. So basically, this is the way that I like to do my uh, quizzes, is I like to give the feedback, and the feedback is simple. The answer is on such and such a page, look it over, and if you have any questions, let's talk about it a little bit more. And that's what I encourage, is not the right answer, by it, but I encourage thinking about it and talking about it and discussing it until someone is really satisfied. Because that's the whole idea, is I want them to be satisfied and not be frustrated. So that's one thing I like to do, and I'm glad I could share that with you and tell you about it.